Uh, Cyro. Uh, <laughs> so you spending thirty minutes watching for the horse, looking for okay. the horse. For so you, you and and Wilhelm, correct, both of you? Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. So uh, we'll just say he's assisting you, and so you it gives you advantage, which will cancel out the disadvantage on an ability check since this isn't part of a journey event. There is no advantage from the embarkation rule, so just a straight uh, survival roll for me, please. Sounds good. All right. Uh, what is my survival? Gotcha. Uh, 19. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> About 15 or 20 minutes go by. Uh, you wander away from the camp a little bit, but you make sure to keep an eye on, on where you are, where you went, how you got there. Uh, so you don't get turned around and, and lost, as you see, is very easy to do uh, here in the Mirkwood. You start to not see something, not hear something, but you actually smell something. And it, it smells like uh, almost like iron, and that's why it stands out to you, because you're in a forest. You don't expect to, to smell something that smells so just forge-like, and uh, you, you kind of follow your nose for a minute, and it, it leads you to a, a small uh, patch area where, uh, I'd say clearing, but really a clearing in the Mirkwood is, is like a, a dense place of, of brush anywhere else, but a clearing nonetheless, and you don't see any horse there, but you do notice that the, the brush and some of the leaves in the area are stained red with blood. I tell what the irony smell was? The blood. Okay, got it. <laughs> when you're talking like, iron, I'm thinking like metal. I got you. I understand. This tastes funny. Um, I think okay. you should... <laughs> can I tell how it died? Uh, it definitely looks like it is. It has been uh, killed and consumed by some large creature. Uh, as you poke around that area a little bit more you see random small bits of, of flesh, um, a few like, like really small bits. It looks like it, it, was, it was consumed pretty hastily. <clears throat> you do find a couple uh, strad strands of hair that definitely look like they would be on like a, a, a horse's tail or mane. Um, I'm pretty confident that this is the, the final resting place of wagon horse number two. Rip. <laughs> uh, I, I return back to camp uh i report what happens and uh i ask out loud does anyone here might know of a creature that might eat a horse in the woods and i stare at Edrahel. and i, I turn to cyril and i say look everything in here can eat a horse and the more that we stay around here the higher our chances of being eaten are as as well All right. Um, as uh, as I hear the conversation, I of course I don't have much of a say right now, but it's, I still say it. I I believe that right now, from now on, two people should uh, keep watch while the other three rest, four rest, counting will. And in the meantime, I go to Zyrael, I take him apart, and it's like, hey, I know that my decision wasn't to your liking. The reason that I didn't say anything and the reason that I came back and did, when, didn't go looking for the horse, but like tried to do it here was because I was thinking about the camp and I wasn't just gonna go and try to um, look for a horse and just leave you guys just resting and completely defenseless. Now I know that my thought process wasn't the best, but now the more that we are in this process, the more I learn about how you guys process. And I'm sorry. Cyril takes a deep breath. <laughs> you not leaving camp was the right decision. It's the fact that you didn't wake us up or when asked in the morning, you did not tell the truth. If we are to trust one another, 
we need to make sure we tell everything we know. Sounds good. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Cyril walks over to Haley, uh, asks if there's any more breakfast and his intent is to grab something to bite to eat and then head off. Get ready to leave for camp or leave the camp with everyone else. As you mentioned that, you do notice as you take some of the, the food that Haley had offered um, earlier before um, you found the remains of the horse. Uh, while you look through the uh, rations you're able to keep with the wagon <clears throat> and then eventually had to part with, uh, you probably have just enough food to last a little over a week. So if you're going to continue to make it uh, on this journey, you will have to be successful in finding uh, more food. Yes, Haley. Does that include 11 Z's in second breakfast? Probably not. <laughs> if you if you if you have all of those every day, you're probably going to take a couple of days worth of rations. <laughs> She's like already in like four days worth of rations. <laughs> Haley's on day four of rations. Hey, right right I, think, I think it's great. <laughs> So while well, this is going on, as me and Dollar Dol, Dol, Dol walk and hunt this next day, I want to I want to talk about kind of some hunting tips I've learned over the time. Hopefully, she'll share some with me, and I will just be more amped up today to hunt. You know, we'll kind of be talking about some good hunting that we've been doing in the past. I was like, yeah, I want shot a, a buck that was that big. I kind of like try to make my arm length. I'm a little dwarf, so I don't have the length. So I'm like, and I go this way a little more. Uh, that was all day one. Wonderful. You guys, you guys are such a wonderful group of people and you're so happy with each other. You're definitely past the storming phase. You're into norming now, which is good. <laughs> Hopefully you're, you're building camaraderie. Uh, as the, the second day of, of the journey um, uh, kicks off, you guys are down one horse. So you can either all double up or you can take turns, three on, three off, and just rotate throughout the day. Uh, if you don't rotate, I will say that I need to know who the three people on the horse are because eventually the other three people will get another point of exhaustion if they're never on a horse. So uh, as a group, y'all need to let me know if you're going to be rotating time on the horses. Uh, um, mainly Cyril and Wilhelm, I know you're particularly attached to your horse, so, uh, what you guys doing? I don't think it would be a good idea to double up unless like it's me and another person because having like two humans or something like that is going to be hard on the horses. I can't speak to Wilhelm's horse. Um, well, I could, but I'm going to let Derek do that because it's Wilhelm and his horse. Um, but uh, uh, Onyx, and the wagon horse are pretty strong, um, especially the wagon horse. Uh, it's, it's used to pulling uh, quite heavy loads. Uh, so it could, the two, those two horses for sure could probably hold two um, regularly sized creatures, uh, especially the slow pace that you're going. Um, I'll let uh, Cyril speak into Flicker. Uh, Flicker could hold someone else, but Cyril and Will will always remain on their horse. Um, they will allow someone, other people to ride as needed um, okay. because of exhaustion's sake. Okay. All right. So you guys will just uh, um, double up as needed. Uh, okay. Good to know. I need, who is it? Cyril and Will. Make a perception check for me. Okay. Uh, again, Will gives me advantage. Yep. Uh, so that cancels out the disadvantage that you have. No. Nope. Because you have two advantages, one disadvantage. So yep. you had you end up with advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. this is a journey check, so you do get the embarkation benefit. Okay. Cool. So we get uh, perception um, seventeen. Seventeen succeeds. That's good. Uh, throughout the rest of the day, um, about three, four, five hours go by. Not much happens. It's, it's pretty uh, 
smooth sailing, if you will, which is wonderful <laughs> given where you guys are in the Mirkwood. Uh, lunchtime comes and goes, you stop and you have a, a, a brief meal, you rest for a moment, and then you guys get back on the road, if you could call it that, it's really uh, um, becoming more of a trail and the further you go, the less of a trail it's going to be and the, the more of a gap between trees it will become. Um, but uh, around dinner time, you guys are looking for a place to set up camp. And uh, Cyril and, and Wilhelm, you guys are just on the lookout. You're trying to keep your, your eyes, you know, alert, hearing and listening for weird sounds. And it throws you off because every forest has odd sounds. The, the Mirkwood makes a normal fo uh, forest sound like nothing. Just the, all of the, the creaking and the groaning and some of it seems to be coming from the trees themselves. But you do spot over a, a ridge, just kind of keeping an, an eye out, um, what appears to be a, a faint bit of, of smoke in the, in the distance, maybe about 200 meters or so. Um, you get a little bit closer, about 150 meters away, and you see a small campground that's been formed. And you see inside uh, at the camp, there are four orcs. And they're all uh, tearing flesh off of uh, this, this uh, hog that's been freshly roasted over their fire. Uh, for the most part, the hog has uh, been untouched. It looks like they're just about to settle in uh, for a meal. Um, you have an option because you succeeded on this perception check. As a group, you guys can decide to set up an ambush and therefore get a benefit of a surprise round in combat, or you can avoid the orcs and move on. How much food do you have at the moment? You have enough food to last you about six more days considering you've already had uh, most of your meals for today. So today's rations taken out of already. So about six days after today, you have enough food for. Uh, Do we think I'd be able to sneak in there and steal some food and then we can just be on our way? Run with the hog? You can certainly try. Um, Andrew, help make a... Let me look at the... Uh, Make a shadow lore check for me, Edraho. All right. Shadow lore, that's intelligent. It's fun because it's Adventures in Middle Earth only. Wow. I don't know. Oh, I heard about that six. game. Six. What? Six. Six. Um, as she mentions that, uh, you kind of think to yourself, well, orcs don't really eat a lot of things that would agree with, with non-orcs. That pig is probably the best thing they've got. Uh, my suggestion would be to avoid. Uh, we don't want to get into a fight and get hurt, and we could take a day, another time to just focus on hunting. So yep, I agree are. with him. The, uh, my my guy says, I say, these like blokes are small fries. I'm after the big fish. <laughs> no, what do you say? Uh. Sorry, my connection is really bad here. So you guys have been going in and out. So uh, I'll just go with whatever Joel said. <laughs> Wise choice. Yeah. That's That's right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a life lesson. Not a life lesson. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know, with I'm great really power, trying, comes great I'm trying to uh, actually put the pieces together, but it's really hard. Yeah. So that's, I'm sorry that's on that. my end. I'm that's okay. That's okay. Sorry, it's being uh, spotty for you, Della. Um, Christina. I don't know why I called you by your character name. Um, uh, Haley, I didn't hear. Are you also in the avoid and move on? I'm in the okay camp. So. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> okay. So you guys uh, decide to avoid the orc camp. Uh, and you move on, um, making special attention to cover any tracks that you might be creating, knowing that there are uh, agents of the shadow um, lurking in the forest uh, closer than you realized before. As you go deeper into the forest, 
you set up camp, you set up watch. Um, who's gonna Who's gonna do watch uh, tonight? We're just gonna do a couple quick perception checks. So I know Adrahel had recommended that you guys always do it in groups of two now. So Cyrell and Wilhelm, are are you pretty much always going to keep watch? I would I would imagine. Is well, that... I think we have Hilly here. I think should do first watch with like somebody. Maybe yeah, Hilly, was... Hilly and Dala, if you guys want to. I was going to do first yeah. watch, but I have a quick question. Is everyone at full health? Uh, I am. I am. I'm two points down. Okay. Well, but no one's like seriously. If, if we've not healed yeah. since the last fight, I only have seven, seven <laughs> HP. <laughs> you only have seven HP? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Did you add in the hit points from when you leveled up? Do you want me to add those up now? Yeah, like, so, it... so if you gained like six max hit points, your actual hit points would also go up by six. Right. Um, so if you were like five out of 12 and you gained eight, then you would then be 13 out of 20. All right. So you would still be down seven, but you would move it up. Well, I'm at 14 health then. Okay. I'm, I'm halfway there. I'm, okay. I'm only half, half dead. I'll wait then, but if we ever take a, a short rest, then I can tell you guys the story around the campfire and, and you'll get extra. Uh, oh, every, every time you guys go to bed at night uh, is going to also count as a short rest. Oh, well then, I, I did too then, because last night I didn't, I didn't do any watches. So would okay. that mean I get... So would that mean I roll my hit dice twice then? Uh, you can... So what happens, uh, you can use your hit die to heal, and on a short rest, you gain half of your hit die rounded down back so uh at level two you would get one hit die um back so you could uh then uh, spend that will set me up that will set me go up. to bed you would get it back and you could spend another one in the morning because uh, my hit, hit die are die 12 so that will put me okay. up to like 20 24 health i'm, I'm fine or 20, 20 26 health which is okay. beyond my max. okay right. no bedtime stories i get it all right you can, yeah, still, I'll watch you can tell a small story if you, if you, want, if you want to <laughs> <laughs> okay, who is watching? Uh, who's taking watch with Haley? We need Sala. Sala. Okay, uh, so both of you uh, make a perception check for me. Uh, Cyril and Wilhelm, are you guys going second watch? I think uh, that me and Ed Edra Hell will do second watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay. roll to us two of us. That's fine. Uh, I'm just trying to speed it up. So whoever's gonna do second watch, roll, and I'll ask you what that was in a little bit. Three, and Dala, when you get a chance, perception. 14. 14, okay. Uh, quick note, Cyrell and Will, we're going to sleep um, next to the horses. Okay. Right. Sure. <clears throat> uh, Haley and Dala, uh, you guys uh, take the first watch about three or four hours long. Um, kind of keep an eye out. Nothing really stands out to you. Haley, you get a little distracted, humming little uh, songs from the Shire uh, that you learned that are you know, kind of keeping your spirits up. You haven't seen the sky in a couple of days and it's kind of sad, but uh, you do a good job at, at, at cheering yourself up. And so you just kind of get distracted in your own little world for a bit. Uh, Dolly, you notice her being a little distracted, but um, you keep an eye out, try to, you know, make sure she doesn't fall asleep and that everything is okay. You look over the horses, they seem fine. Everyone seems, seems pretty relaxed, uh, surprisingly so uh, for the Mirkwood. Uh, you're, time uh doing watch goes by just fine no real hiccups and you guys wake up edrahel and nebuchadnezzar and you go off to sleep nebuchadnezzar edrahel what'd you roll 12 17 awesome uh is there anything that you guys wanted to do before i summarize what happens do you want to ask me something not this night. I'm gonna wait this night. I think that this night I'm just gonna stay on task. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. BS. I want to ask. Hey, you. You seem familiar. The first time that I that I met you. Have we? Have we seen each other before? I go away a long time. A long time ago, we fought. I think on different sides. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But a lot has changed since then. I've been out and about, uh, going after the shadow, 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 and rid ridding it one at a time. <clears throat> Sight, that sounds familiar. Where was it? Do you, do you recall? Some, some, old, some old war. I don't remember. Uh, I've been through enough at this point. They all kind of blur together as big one big fight. But you're a kid. What are you, like 100 years old? Oh, that's so cute. 
84. 84 years old. 84? Oh, I remember those times when I was 84. Uh, Okay. That's it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The uh, watch that you guys provide that evening um, goes rather smoothly. Edrahel, uh, you're uh, especially careful not to fall asleep tonight. Um, as uh, uh, dodgy as you were earlier in the day, you do feel bad uh, for, for losing a horse, um, especially as someone who loves nature and animals and everything else. And uh, it truly was, was a shame. So you guys stay alert, stay on guard. Nothing seems to make its way towards you guys. And, and you start to get a little comfortable thinking that, hey, maybe the, maybe the Mirkwood's not as bad as people say, right? Um, but that, that thought immediately leaves your mind as you just look up at just the horrible, twisted, knotted nature of the rotten trees surrounding you. Um, and you just feel a little off, both of you. But the end of your watch comes. You wake up the rest of the party and all of you have breakfast and set out for the day. Um, I need... I think that we should have Haley tell us how, how many ra- ra- rations she eats today for us. <laughs> this isn't my first time in the wood. I can eat less. I just prefer to eat more. Please <laughs> don't. Please don't. <laughs> I need Cyril to make a perception check. Aided by Will. Advantage. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, nat 20. Woof, 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 woof. Hey. Nice. Nat 20 dance. Right there. Right there. There like it is. It. That's all right. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Do performance check. No, so, I mean, performance check. Yeah, what's your performance check there? Uh, that's, uh, like a low, like a like a low eight or something. On a... <laughs> performance check of four. Ah. Uh, Cyril, you um, you're not the scouts. You don't you don't really leave the party um, oh. like Haley will on occasion, but you do uh, tend to you know bring up the rear and just watch things and make sure that you're keeping an eye on your surroundings and and really you see your role as one of protecting from ambush um spotting enemy scouts uh that that might uh uh, see you guys and so it was kind of surprising to you when you you kind of look off to the right and there's a a bit of a, a another sort of sloped ridge maybe goes up 10 15 feet you can't quite see over um off to your right Haley, you've you've kind of scouted off to the left as the 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 path seems to kind of branch uh, to the left up ahead. Um, but Cyrell, your, your curiosity gets the best of you. And you take uh, about 30 seconds and you kind of nudge Wilhelm and Wilhelm lets the rest of the party know that you've gone off in that direction so they don't leave you or lose you. Uh, and you kind of scurry up the hill. It takes 15 seconds. Uh, it's uh, a little bit steep, but there's a lot of brush and and roots of trees that have kind of come out of the ground in, in different uh, sort of gnarled, uh, twisted roots. And you're able to climb your way to the top of the ridge. And as you look over it, uh, at first nothing catches your eye, but then you kind of look off to your left a little bit and you see um, what looks to be uh, this stone archway. No building around it, but it's like, uh, it's like a stone foundation, maybe 10 square feet. And there's this, this, this almost pristine archway that since has been covered in, in vines and the, the forest has kind of crept in. And you look at it and something about it is, is drawing to you. And so you, you kind of give a nod over to the rest of the party. You hop over the ridge, you slide down the other side about 10 or 15 feet. And you go and you walk over to it and, and you look around it and and you recognize it. You recognize it as something that you've seen in a dream once. You can't quite place it or, or remember the, the context of, of the dream, but you remember something about 
woodland elves and you remember singing and you just remember uh, a piece, a piece. And, you know, this is your, your third day in the Mirkwood and you haven't seen the sky in forever and everything's really dark and you haven't seen a, a, a bird or a peaceful creature in, in quite some time, but you, you see this stone arch and it encourages you as you are just brought back to a place of, of comfort, a place of good, and something about it just sparks a memory in you that's full of joy. I need you to make a wisdom check. Okay. Well. Uh, 16. 16. Um, that's good. Uh, everyone else, uh, you as a party kind of stop. And when you notice uh, Cyrell, um, kind of give you guys a nod and then hop over the edge of the ridge. Uh, do you guys go over and uh, check him out, see what he's looking at? Yes. Well, I'm, okay. I'm going to stay back and keep a watch on our, on our back, on our rear. So. Okay. Haley? Can you Haley? Me, are you going to follow Derek? Uh, Edrahel is um, when you see him kind of go over the ridge uh, and, and disappear out of view. As a s scout, I kind of feel like I should. Okay, uh, like you should. Got it. Okay, I was waiting for more to the sense. Um, <laughs> I, I <was> <laughs> yes, I should. Got it. <laughs> uh, okay, so the uh, Edrahel and Haley, uh, Dala, you were nodding. Are you? Were you agreeing with Joel, or are you? going with uh, yeah, yeah I'm not following okay I'm not following All right. so you Sarah. you and Joel will stick behind um, Wilhelm Edrahel and Haley uh, you guys all climb over the ridge and you see uh, about 20 feet away or so Cyrell is is standing on this sort of stone uh, foundation this this archway that's covered in vines and brush uh, and you walk over and you see um, that it's actually uh, littered in in runes um, some of you uh, speak Elven, obviously, Adrahel, you do, um, and you you recognize the sylvan nature of of the runes that are carved into the stone, but you're not really able to figure out what they say. Adrahel, I want you to make a history check with advantage. History check. All right. And what when in doubt, then just speak, friend. <laughs> Melon. <laughs> Melon. Uh, that would be a. Sorry, I'm trying to figure it out. Five. Five. <laughs> with with advantage, the best of two rolls. Yes. What was the last roll? We need a wizard in our party. You start to. <laughs> try and, and figure out what some of the runes are. You, you tell your, your compatriots here about a class that you had taken when you were a kid that, that taught about you know, <laughs> elven heritage. And um, you end up oh, going on great. so many rabbit trails that you kind of lose track of what you were talking about. And you eventually circle back. And you're not able to make out what the runes say, but you are able to recognize that um, these are, are very old. Um, <laughs> well, like, well done. Like first old magic. Age like first age era um, elven um, make and, and craft work. So they are thousands and thousands of years old at this point. And uh, the language has, has adjusted and shifted over the years and the generations. Um, even creatures that live as long as elves, things change over long periods of time. And this has been here for a long, long time. So you're not able to, to quite make out what the runes are, but looking at them does sort of uplift your spirits. It's a, it's a little piece of home that you didn't expect to get uh, here in the Mirkwood. So Edrahel, Wilhelm, and Haley, I need all of you to now make a wisdom check. I remember what you got, Cyril, so you're good. Just tell me what uh, Wilhelm gets. Oh, okay. Uh... Is it a saving throw or a check? Just a wisdom check. So roll and add your wisdom modifier. Eight. Thirteen. Okay. okay. Uh, Will gets a seven. Okay. Uh, 
everyone except Will. Eight was what you needed. <laughs> um, uh, you all are encouraged by the archway, by the reminder that um, even in, in a, a place as dark as the Mirkwood, that small bastions of hope can still stand, that remnants of um, society and culture and goodness um, can persist in the midst of such growing shadow and evil. Uh, and you all are now inspired. Okay. So you all receive a point of inspiration. So you, how, what, we had a D6? D4? Uh, D, it's a, a D6. Yep. So you can roll a D6, which is fun. Um, Now I need everyone in the party to make a wisdom or an investigation check. This is separate from the one I just did and everyone, including Wilhelm, has to do it. Uh, I got a natural one, so I am ready to be wise. <laughs> Dang. I'm a wise guy. <laughs> this is a journey thing, so your advantage and your disadvantage will cancel out, so it's just one roll. 14. Investigation. Okay. Six. Oh, wait, was it investigation or wisdom? Choice. Either, either or. Either or but... You got to pick. So whichever one you would rather do, you can. Six. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Cyril got a 15. Will got a 13. Okay. And Dawa? 14. Yeah. Good job, Dawa. Okay, so she got a 14, Cyrell and Wilhelm was a 15, and 13, 13, Haley, 14, 14, and Edrahel was a 6. Okay, uh, everyone except for Edrahel and Nebuchadnezzar succeeded, Yes. Um, which means everyone who succeeded may remove a level of exhaustion. I thought I had gotten the full rest. There is no full rest. Edge your you with your inspiration. Yeah, there's there's no there's no long rest on a journey. Oh. So you guys don't get a benefit from long rest. Um, so not even not even with my elvish dream. No. No. It's it, the the journey rules change the core rules of the game. So in a journey there are no long rests. Yeah. Huh. So everyone except for Edrahel <laughs> and Nebuchadnezzar uh, got to remove one point of exhaustion. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, Edrahel and Nebuchadnezzar, because you failed, you gain another point of exhaustion. So you each have two <laughs> points now. So you have disadvantage on all of your ability checks. Your movement speed is now half. So the two of you probably should stay Ride on horses. Course. Yeah. I think that me and Ed Ed Edrahel should share the same horse. And I'll let and I'll. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's, that's do you not, want to be front I mean, or back, man? I mean, that's just personality-wise. I don't recommend it, but you are small, and he is a petite elf. So the two of you on a horse uh, wouldn't really bother the horse, probably. Maybe I should ride with Cyril and just spoon. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys can you guys can decide who's going to ride which horses. It, it, uh, it, it's fine uh, as long as both of you are going to be on a horse. Uh, it's going to be hard now. Uh, <laughs> hear much, but I heard that. Very <laughs> I'm sad because there's no one to spoon with me. Okay. 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 Off of my... okay. <sighs> All right. So, encouraged uh, by the uh, discovery that you made of the um, very small remnant of um, uh, some sort of elven structure, uh, you guys carry on with the rest of your day. This inspiration is not going to disappear in like 10 minutes or whatever. Um, it's, it's DM inspiration, so you guys keep it until you use it. So, on the next attack, ability check, or saving throw, uh, you can roll your d20, um, reconcile the result, and then if you want, you can roll a d6 and add it to that result. So uh, if you roll the d6 and add it, that's what you get. Nothing else changes. 
uh, or you can hold on to that D6. Um, it's up to you. Uh, could come in handy. You can only use it once. So <clears throat> you uh, uh, actually decide um, it was getting a little bit later in the day. Uh, by the time you see this, this, uh, this arch and you kind of make up camp in that area, you guys uh, set up watch. Um, just uh, two of you uh, go ahead and, and make a perception check real quick. Um, I just need to know if you roll a one or a 20, realistically. Sure, I'll do it. Okay, who else is, who else is doing watch? Dala. Right, Dala. <laughs> Give me a perception check, Dala. Okay. 17. Yeah. yeah. What do you what do you perceive? <laughs> what do your human eyes see? What do you get, Adriel? Nine. Nine. Okay. Um so you and, and your your partner, um, whoever it is that, that watches with you, uh, you guys go through the night not really uh oppressed or or uh attacked or spotted by any sort of uh, creature or what have you. You've actually had a, a pretty swell journey so far into the Mirkwood. Um, but you're all encouraged and your, your spirit's a little bit higher the next morning when you wake up and, and you look and you see once again this sort of remaining bastion of civilization and good nature and Edrahel, your people's history. And you're uh, excited and you're ready to, to kind of hit the road again and, and get a little bit further into the dark evil place known as the Mirkwood, <laughs> uh, which has been treating you all uh, rather well. Um, as you start the next day of your journey, uh, your fourth day here in the Mirkwood, um, you're making the transition now from severely difficult terrain to daunting terrain, as the path ahead uh, really ceases to be a path. And at this point, you're now more than anything trekking through the forest itself and you have to uh in some instances cut your way uh through brush cyrell give me a perception check if you would okay and still aid it by will correct yes yes with advantage uh okay i get uh 19. wonderful you spot a tree <clears throat> um, along your path. It's uh, a little bit shorter than the other trees in the area. It doesn't, uh, its canopy uh, really no longer exists. It's a, it's a withered tree. Um, it's gone gray in some areas. Uh, it's covered in twisted knots of wood. Some of the branches are, are broken. And, and as you approach it, it just something about it kind of makes you uneasy. Uh, and upon inspecting it, you realize that it's, it's uh, rotted on the inside and that it wouldn't take much for this tree to, to buckle and, and fall over. And so you just, you kind of make note of it, um, and let the party know as they pass by to be especially careful not to disturb that tree. Um, something about it just stood out to you. A couple hours go by, you guys stop, you make uh, a brief camp, you have lunch. <clears throat> this is uh, five days left of rations. Keep that in mind. You guys are gonna need to go and get some food soon. Five days of rations left. After lunch, pack up camp, back on your horses, especially with uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Edrahel. You guys, maybe it's the, the constant bickering back and forth, uh, but you just feel a little tired. You feel a little on edge, a little pointed almost. And as uh, just contempt start to build up inside the both of you, Cyril, I need you to make another perception check. Again with will yes. help Vinich. Uh, natural 20. Natural 20. <clears throat> As you guys come around a bend in the forest ahead, uh, Cyril, a, there's a, a, a tree kind of withered and um, dying or, or already dead uh, in the path up ahead, and it, it catches your eye. Uh, and you, you walk over and you look at it and you notice that it's covered in knots and it's, it's probably rotted on the inside. Something about it just makes you uncomfortable. And so you uh, let the rest of the party know and, you know, make sure that they're careful not to disturb the tree as they pass because you wouldn't want it to fall down onto the pathway. <clears throat> A couple hours go by. You guys uh, 
stop and you have dinner. And uh, again, Edrahel and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, as you're eating, you're just tired. You feel a little weak. Um, and you don't really talk much. You just kind of give each other the eye over your ration of food. And as a group, you decide, let's, let's try and, and keep going a little bit. Uh, it's, we, had an, we had an early lunch. We had an early dinner. And still a few hours left before we would probably bed down for the night. So you hit the trail again, hoping to find something maybe a little bit uh, better to rest on. Cyrell, I need you to make another perception check with advantage. I remember to tell you this time. I'll just keep asking. <laughs> uh, 19. 19. <clears throat> uh, about 45 minutes or so after you have packed up camp and continue down the path, you see ahead a tree. It's a little withered and, and gray. A lot of knots going up and down it, and you notice the uh, the tree itself is, is a little bit shorter and just mm, something about it makes you uncomfortable. You go up there and you inspect it. Uh, you realize um, you spend a lot of time with, uh, with woods of, of different kinds. And this one is, is definitely dead. There, there appears to be some kind of rot. You kind of pick at it with a knife and it looks like um, it's been rotting on the inside, the kind of thing that could just snap uh, in an instant. And so you let the party know. Tell okay, while he's telling us, and my, my guy is already about to snap himself, I leap off the horse and I just start to attack it with both of my hand axes. And I, I, I mean, not like the horse, but the like, tree. Uh, just clarify. <laughs> <laughs> no horses were harmed in the making of this Why production. Why am I going to attack my horse? I'm so <laughs> So I just... He's like saying this dang tree. My, my, my guy is fed up with this. My, my guy having a past... Um, with some sort of magical stuff. I'm not totally guys about that yet, not a party yet, but my, my, my guy's aware of the world has some magic, some weird stuff in there and some loopholes. So my guy just jumps out with his two hand axes and he just goes to town on that <laughs> dying tree. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not going to stop until that thing is down. Okay. Uh, as you approach it, um, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you, uh, as a, a wonderful person, have uh, dark wonderful. foreboding. And as you approach the tree, it sets off all just manner of uncomfortableness within you. Uh, you definitely get a sense that something about this tree has been touched by the shadow. Um, undeterred, you bring up your hand axes and you slam them into the side of the tree. And on your first swing, you hear a disgusting crack of the tree as your first ax embeds itself in the trunk. And the crack that it creates immediately shoots up through the center of the tree and the tree splits in half and almost explodes in a violent force as it crashes down around you. Uh, you and Cyrell were closest to the tree. I need you both to make a dexterity save. Oh yeah. I got a uh, three. 